Well, these, these comments <laughs> about Ewing began to appear all over in the newspapers. And the final upshot of it all was, I'm getting letters from people that says, you know, the, uh, the other day the, the, my boss asked me if I read it. He says, what do I say? So my boss reads all the book club books. <laughs> and he's, he's waiting for it to come in the book club, you know. And the boss, he says, it's all this stuff. And one day, the final one, it, it scared me. I, Libertine, was on the proscribed list. It was banned by a very prominent church. Oh, you remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, I didn't and know. By the that, Boston that Diocese. No, this, this blew the gap. I said, <laughs> and my listeners are staggering. You know, what, what they, and, and what do you think at the end of the seventh week? It is on a nationwide bestseller list. But, Gene, this is interject one. Do you mean that it's possible that several hundred I'm telling people, you what happened. Yeah, but 700 people that no. should have been excommunicated no, 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 for no, reading no, the book. That's right. Let me then. They see you're killing the story. But that, that I'm telling you what happened. This is not a thing for gags. This is just exactly a historical thing. And I'm sitting back there, and all this stuff is happening, see. And about, I'd say, 2 o'clock on a, an, on a oh, it was, I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday morning, and this has been going for eight weeks now, that it is now a bestseller in Paris, in Rome. They're asking for it in bookstores. They're asking for it in places like Honolulu, everywhere, all over. And, and the people who are asking for it, remember, know that it doesn't exist. That's the important point. Right. They are sitting back and watching the repercussions. And here it is, you know, the, 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 there's no mentions of the book in all kinds of columns and everywhere of people who think it does exist. I says, remember, friends, they think it does. And when we were banned in Boston by a very prominent church, I mean, our whole, whole, our whole world was crumbling. You see, I mean, by now I was a little afraid. You know, next thing you know, the president's going to mention that you know <laughs> that he loves this book. See, then I wouldn't believe in anything. You know, <laughs> and, and and about two o'clock in the morning, I get a telephone call, and this guy gets on the phone, on the phone, very funny voice, and he says, "Look," he says, "Shop," he said, he says, "You know, you're right. You've touched on something very important. There are two kinds of people in this country: the believers and us." And he said, "I am a reporter." for the Wall Street Journal. And he says, I've listened to this thing from the beginning. He says, it's incredible. And by the way, we had even had a, an editorial, an editorial in life. And, and he said, this is fantastic. And he says, don't you think it's about time to spill the story? And I said, yeah, I think so. I said, this is getting out of hand. And so he came down to the office, and I showed him all this documentary proof, and he went back to his office, and he worked on this piece. And on Wednesday afternoon, on this August, hot August day, it appeared front page, middle, two, three-column banner. It says, Gigantic Literary Hoax. Shows the, the, real, the real phoniness behind a lot of the things that people believe in, like lists, and so on, and he had the whole thing documented. Well, that came out on the newsstands at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was sitting in my office. It was fantastic. At 3.01, I would say with it between 3.01 and 3.05, there were six countries on the phone calling me about that. Melbourne was calling. Rome was calling. <laughs> newspaper editors, Figaro, the German newspapers, oh. everywhere. It was a fantastic story. And, and that story, it's probably one of the very few stories that has ever been printed, word for word, taken out of the Wall Street Journal and reprinted in Pravda. <coughs> it was printed exactly word for word. Well, well, this thing just blew to the point where, where people were calling from all over. And then, it, it, it was never at any point was there any PR involved. It was a, a whole series of forces that came together. And I think that time... That particular year was the beginning of the whole new attitude that people have today towards things which they never questioned. People today question politicians. They never did, really. They used to say things about it, but today they really question. Uh, people look at things, and it was the beginning, and I'm not saying that started it. I'm saying that was the beginning uh, of, a, of a whole thing. After that, Mort Saul grew and Money Bruce and the whole 
the whole thing changed over almost almost in that period overnight it just began to mushroom isn't there and more to that story about the book Oh, there's much more, but we we, oh. we, we don't have that time. Am I crazy, or did I read that, that somebody eventually wrote a book? No, later then. You see, when it was... Oh, but later on, about... You a, see, you know. you're, you're going ahead again. Then, so then uh, one day, a friend of mine, a writer, Ted Sturgeon, Ted right, Sturgeon right. called me one day and, and said, listen, he says, you know, he says, there's this publisher who... He says, he's a paperback publisher, and he says, you have got him taken. He says, this guy is going around all over the world trying to get the paperback print, <laughs> free print <laughs> rights on I Love Her Dates. And so he says, let's have lunch with him. And he's going to have kicks. So I sat down with him, and he says, uh, we were eating lunch, and he turns to him, and he said, listen, he said, would you like to meet, the, the publisher was Ian Valentine. Valentine, he yeah. said, would you like to meet I Love Her Would you like to meet Fred Ewing? And, and Ian is a very innocent type guy. He says, yeah, he says, I certainly would. He says, I've been very interested in meeting him. And he says, well, here he is, sitting right here. Hmm. And that lunch, we decided, he says, well, let's turn out I Liberty. Hmm. And all yeah. the day people will buy it. The night people will. <laughs> we finally, and, and and we turned all the we took we took all the profits of thing by the way and turned it over to charity in case you're interested. I didn't know that. Oh no, yeah, no. it was not a, a commercial deal in, in, in any sense of the word. So we put this baby on, and sure enough, we were together. He and I, we we banged this thing out. You know, we're sitting at it like, and and it became a bestseller genuinely after that. But the whole mm. the whole progression of this thing. So, now. In America, this is, and then I, the, 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 the further lesson that all of my listeners learned was the way it was reported in the press. It says things like, uh, disc jockey, uh, sells non-existent book to listeners. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The reverse, the listeners sold a non-existent book to the world. It was a very, and they went on, you know, they didn't want to admit. Well, they haven't had, yeah. Too. Well, no, no, not that they got took. That the thing was a comment on the entire structure of the official critic the official layer down of the eight best dressed people newspapers go for this kind of stuff the ten best seller books they're the final still happens thing. today though yeah. it still it's does still it never changed change. no, no no wait no, no excuse me no, no don't go into that we know that it, it still goes today but i'm saying this is why it was never reported and, and analyzed for what it really was except overseas that the British press loved this. And just a few years ago, that story, which you don't even remember, interestingly enough, it's been forgotten in America, but all over the world it is recognized as a real comment on the public relations world, uh, the, the world of the, of the glib uh, newspaper writer, the, the, the whole thing, of the, the official lists. And the Daily Express of London a few years ago picked the... 50 greatest hoaxes of the 20th century up to that time, which was 1962 or 63. And I, Libertine, they gave it a, a great big spread. Mm -hmm. It was one of the great hoaxes of all time. So it wasn't just a little gag that it no, got. No, it, no, it, that's it. Yeah. No, it had, a, it had over, uh, overseas. And, now, many times we've heard the story of somebody who creates a non-existent thing and gets little plugs in the paper and all right. that. But that's not what we did. This was very different. And when your book is banned, that's something else. And, uh, it's much reviewed. It's, uh... Yeah, and, and, uh, and by the way, if it, all this is documented, Time Magazine did no, a big story I remember story the whole thing. The Bob was Newsweek the city, did a big though. story in life. This was all afterwards, you yeah. know, on the, on the actual story. But none of them really touched on the meaning of the story because that was still too early. If this thing had happened today, with the, I think people are much more aware.